this is our week 11 lecture. I will say that in the interest of time, um, I will skip through the things that you could find the, um, you know, that you can get the translation for, things that you can kind of work on on your own. Go ahead and use your resources to be able to, you know, understand what's happening in the story. Um, and then you can get through the jokes if you think that's funny. This one is kind of funny. Um, our idiom for this week is coûter les yeux de la tête, um, literally to cost the eyes from the head, kind of the equivalent of the English idiom, something costs an arm and a leg when it's super expensive. So for example, um, you would say, oh la la, cette maison coûte les yeux de la tête. Um, so, uh, and then, so then we'll start our, uh, we will start with our quiz review. Um, Qu'est-ce que tu, no, I'm sorry, that's the wrong, um, wrong question that I'm thinking of. Uh, uh, let's see, quand, oh, à quelle heure te réveilles-tu? À quelle heure te réveilles-tu? Uh, there's a little hint for you, or maybe this is how you wake up. Um, so if you heard this question, then your answer would be something along the lines of je me réveille à, and then I just put six heures, whatever time you get up, sept heures, huit heures, neuf heures, whatever. Um, just remember that, so this question is asking, what time do you wake up? And so then you would answer, I wake up, literally I wake myself up um, at, and then put a time. So this is uh, the format that I would expect for your quiz. Um, okay. And then we're gonna go through, here's some more review that you can actually work through um, on your own, seeing if you could answer these questions correctly. For example, elle va, so here we have she is going, well I'll go ahead through these because there are uh, some little things to pay attention to. So we see that according to the picture, she's putting on makeup. And you remember that that is se maquiller. So then we need to say, so she is going to, and we'd say put on makeup. Um, and so the correct answer would be se maquille. Uh, sorry, there's supposed to be an R right there. Um, I don't know if I fix it right here, if it's gonna show up quickly enough. But um, the reason that it is se maquille is because um, the va, is your conjugated verb, and it may not. Um, I'll see if it'll, yeah. Va is your uh, conjugated verb. There we go. And um, so, s would stay, would, well in this case, it is agreeing with the subject el by staying s. Uh, and then maquiller can stay in the infinitive because we already have the conjugated verb. Um, je ne veux pas, I don't want to um, fall asleep. This is from the I perspective. Um, so then it would be m'endormir. Oh, what happened with that one? Je ne veux pas m'endormir. Oh, sorry. I'll make sure to fix that too. <laughs> I apologize. Um, Anyway, so just, let me see, where's my little cursor here? Uh, I just wonder why that didn't. Yeah, it was supposed to. Okay. Well, I do apologize. Uh, let's go through this one again. Uh, okay, well, the reason, so this one here, no, it's just not going to work with me. Um, sorry about that. I could just stop this video and start over, but, uh, okay, so this would be a m'endormir m apostrophe because the m agrees with the je, and then endormir would stay in the infinitive because, again, we have a conjugated verb already. Let's see if some of these will want to start working correctly. Okay, um, and so we have a picture of her brushing her teeth. Our subject here is nous. Uh, so we wanna say, you know, are we, this is a question, are we brushing our teeth? So our subject and verb are inverted, but our um, 
reflexive pronoun always stays in front of its verb. So we've got nous brossons, nous les dents. Remember that, um, so this is the reflexive pronoun, even though it looks just like the subject pronoun. Um, nous brossons is conjugated in the present. Um, nous is our subject, les dents, because we already have that we're brushing our own is included in the reflexive, so we don't need to say it again. Um, and then, oh, I don't know why it's not working. This one is a command. And so it would be, um, so we've got se peigner is the instruction for comb, um, to comb your own hair. But uh, then um, because this is an ER verb, whenever you conjugate it, it would be uh, Pena, P-E-I-G-N-E-S. Um, but because it is the uh, imperative form, then you um, drop the S. And so it's just Pena toi, um, P-E-I-G-N. E. Okay. Um, here we have, uh, so we've got bonjour, je m'appelle Céline as the hint. Hello, my name is Céline. I remember uh, m'appelé or s'appelé is to call oneself. We've got n is asking, isn't your name Céline? Literally, don't you call yourself Céline? Um, so again, our, we've got our uh, appelé uh, is conjugated in the present tense is a regular ER verb, so appel, and then uh, there, and then um, the t, because we have the clue right here that we're talking to Celine, so to, and then because it is a vowel, the t and appel, then we'll just um, contract it and drop the e and just put, uh, it becomes tapel. Okay, and then he, going to say he is going to bed, you will have a caption making it clear, uh, or you'll have the English translation. Um, il se couche. Uh, something has happened that every one of the second clicks aren't working. I apologize. Okay, uh, so we are uh, also learning about the Académie Française. They are just the governing body of the French language, making sure that you know, it can preserve the integrity of the French language that English doesn't just come flooding in and changing, you know, the entire, um, you know, they do want to preserve the language. You can read through this. Um, it is interesting. Um, oh, they are called, the governing body are made up of 40 um, professionals from different walks of life. Uh, because it is a life appointment, unless in some rare case, then they are called les immortals uh, or les quarante, the forty. Um, but this is something you can kind of read through. This is their purpose. Um, for example, here, um, a lot of times English words will sort of float into um, other languages, and they just adopt it. Like, for example, like we've already had uh, des blue jeans, un CD, stuff like that. Um, in this case their official recommendation. So we have electronic mail, which nobody calls it that. We call it email. So we already have like a little bit of an abbreviated um, word uh, for this super popular um, form of communication. And the Académie Française has a recommandation officielle to call it le courriel, uh, even shortening it to le mail with an accented E, or courrier électronique, which would kind of be the equivalent of our electronic mail, but nobody really calls it that. The actual um, courant, the current version, is an email. Um, is called an anglicism or anglicism, which is just making, you know, it's, um, well, it's making their word in English, but they're just taking an English word and kind of making it a French, you know, type thing. The uh, homework, or the, excuse me, the vocabulary for this unit has to do with vacation. Um, so you can click through these and practice. So these verbs, uh, it's just a regular ER verb, it would be conjugated like an ER verb. Um, in this 
this case, we've got faire, you would conjugate faire, which is just making a distinction between, you know, um, snow skiing or water skiing. Um, you just conjugate the verb, uh, and then the rest is sort of just uh, detail. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, our verb for this week is uh, falloir. It means to be necessary or must, but this is an impersonal verb, so it doesn't, it's not conjugated like je faut, you know, it's like the other verbs that we've had. The only form in the present tense is il faut, and it just means that this is necessary to do. It's followed by the infinitive form of a verb. So, for example, à quelle heure est-ce qu'il faut, est qu faut arriver à la piscine, Pierre? What time do you have to? So, when we say, do you have to, we kind of add a little bit of a personal note to it, but this is just, it's an impersonal verb. It's just the same thing as like, what is necessary to be done, what needs to be done. So, you need to arrive at the pool, Pierre. Il faut arriver à 8h30. It's necessary to arrive at 8.30. Um, so just il faut and then an infinitive form of the verb and whatever the rest of the sentence is is going to remain the same. If you maybe think, well, we've already had a verb that means like to must or you know, seems like it would be the same as to be necessary. Devoir. Well, devoir is a personal verb. So it's conjugated like I must, you must, like we have, um, it just is conjugated like we've um, had regular verbs. Um, when this personal verb is followed by a noun, the meaning is to owe, like, a, you know, Bill, how much do you owe uh, for your meal in the restaurant? Or it's kind of that idea. Or um, in the sense of an obligation or a duty. When you have falloir, remembering again that it's an impersonal verb, um, when it is followed by a noun, then it means, you know, then you need to do this, then it's necessary. Um, okay, so then we're also tackling the passé composé this week, which is the simple past tense, um, meaning that the action has started and ended in the past. Um, this is already over, there's no continuation of it. Our equivalent would be I walked or I have walked. Um, and in the same way, then we use a helping verb in the present tense um, and then a past participle. And this is how we form the passé composé in French, or the simple past. Um, today's helping verb or auxiliary verb that we're gonna uh, use is verbs with um, that use avoir. Avoir uh, is used with most verbs. Um, and so you're gonna just conjugate it just the same way that you've learned from, you know, second day of French one. Uh, J'ai, tu as, il est long, a, nous avons, vous avez, il, elle, son. Um, and then you're going to add a past participle. And so each group of verbs uh, has their own formation of the past participle. To form the past participle of an ER verb, you just drop the ER from the infinitive and add the accented E. Our uh, accent aigu, the same kind that goes in like cafe, it gives that A sound. So we've got parler, uh, to speak, and then this past participle would be, you know, either spoke or have spoken, um, but we have to conjugate the present uh, tense of avoir, so it would be j'ai, just like usual, and then we'll just add on the past participle parler, I spoke, as opposed to je parle, which is I speak or I am speaking. Um, so it just kind of, you can see here, it just follows the same pattern. Um, and then to form the past participle of an IR verb, then we just drop the R, which is pretty simple. So finir becomes fini, and then j'ai fini, tu as fini. Again, same steps, conjugating avoir in the present, and then adding on the past um, participle, which makes it now the past tense of this verb. To form the past participle of an RE verb, drop the RE and add a U. So répondre becomes répondu. Same thing, avoir conjugated, add the past participle. J'ai répondu, I responded, I answered. Tu as répondu, on and on. So it's just sort of like remembering the steps to first conjugate avoir in the present tense to agree with its subject, and then to see which past participle, you know, which group it belongs to. And these are all four regular verbs. So just to kind of see it um, in action. So we have Denis et moi. Denis and I, and then allumer le barbecue.
barbecue light the barbecue pit. So we conjugate uh, once I et moi, once I am in the group, it becomes we. So Denis et moi, zav uh, avant zalume le barbecue. Avant is the new form of avoir. Allume with the accent is the past participle of a regular ER verb. Agnes, and then choisir ou faire le picnic. Agnes, and then to choose where to have the picnic. Agnes a choisi ou faire le picnic. And then uh, les garçons, we have perdu la ball, to, uh, they lost the ball. Les garçons ont perdu la ball. And there's just some examples of how we find it. So we've got the present tense, il mange. Passé composé becomes il a mangé. Um, to form the negative, we just put the ne in the pot around or whatever the negative expression is. We put it around the helping verb, the conjugated uh, helping verb. So il n'a pas mangé. We didn't, he did not eat. To make it a question, we'll invert um, the helping verb with the subject pronoun. Um, remember, we don't really um, invert a person's name, so then you could just substitute, you know, il, el, whichever fits, uh, or they. Um, but because we have, again, if you'll remember, this is what, how, whenever we inverted avoir before, um, that we had to add the hyphen, t hyphen, so that it's not a, a it is not a, you know, breaking uh, hard sound. A-t-il mangé? And then um, to form the negative, then again, the n and pa still go around the conjugated helping verb, but in this case, you can't separate the inverted subject. So it becomes n'a-t-il pas mangé? And then that's just where the negative um, is formed. Um, so just like in English where we have regular verbs to look, um, it doesn't change very much. I look, you look, she looks, he looks. Those are just regular, you know, usage. But in English, we also have irregular verbs like the verb to be. I am, you are, he is. It changes in almost every form. So yeah, and you just have to memorize them. It's just um, because it's irregular, you just have to remember, you know, how that particular verb behaves. Same thing in French where we have past participles of irregular verbs, they don't follow the same pattern as uh, the regular verbs, so these need to be memorized. The past participle of avoir is e, lire is lu. These you'll just have to see. There are sometimes little, um, you know, it looks similar enough to the main verb so that you can kind of connect it or remember, just like écrire, écrire, that's not too far off, dire, di. Uh, voulu, but then you might have to like spend a little bit more effort to remember that voir is vu in the past tense. Um, so here are two slides for you to have access to to see what they are. And remember if you ever either see the past participle and don't recognize which verb it's from, um, or if you can't remember and it is uh, really difficult and kind of clumsy to try to find which lesson it was, which slide it was. Remember, you can always go to wordreference.com and type it in and it will give you, you know, every conjugation and forms that we haven't even gotten to yet, but it'll connect the verbs for you. So we've got je and then voir un film. Well, we just saw that voir is irregular, um, but we'll um, remember that it's vu, vu. Uh, so we'll just conjugate je in the present form, so it'll be j'ai vu un film. I saw uh, a movie. And then vous pouvoir aller au cinéma. In this case, we have two verbs. So if it was the present tense, then we would conjugate it vous pouvez aller au cinéma. Remember, aller is gonna stay in the infinitive because we're conjugating our first verb. Well, this will be the verb that we're gonna put in the past tense. Um, and then we'll have, so we'll have vous avez pu aller au cinéma. Uh, the rest of this is still going to stay the same. The pouvoir becomes the past participle pu, and then present tense of avoir. To form the negative uh, in this same sentence, remember again, the ne and pa just go on either side of the conjugated verb, um, of the helping verb. So je n'ai pas vu un film. I didn't see this movie. Um, and in this example, vous, and then pouvoir aller au cinéma, it would just be vous n'avez pas. Aller au cinéma, and that's how 
uh, we could form the negative of that. To make it a question, uh, especially if we are inverting, remember again, we don't invert somebody's name. So it would just be Joseph, a-t-il vu un film? Does he see the film? Um, we just start with his name and then we've got our inverted uh, auxiliary verb, helping verb and the subject pronoun. And then continuing with the past participle in the rest of the sentence. Um, in this one, because again, it's a little bit different because there are two, uh, you know, we've got two verbs that we're working with here. So then again, we're still con um, inverting the helping verb with the subject pronoun. Uh, Avez-vous pu aller au cinéma? And to make it negative, then again, only uh, negating the inverted uh, helping verb and subject pronoun. Joseph n'a-t-il pas vu un film? He didn't see this movie. Or n'avez-vous pas pu aller au cinéma? Uh, ne and pas around the inverted helping verb and subject pronoun. That is all that we have for today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me.